All right, man, peace. So, brothers, we're getting closer to that moment, man. <laughs> we're getting closer to that moment of truth where Mikey Garcia is going to have to show and prove a lot of the rhetoric that he's been putting out there about Arrow the Truth Spence coming up this Saturday night. And let me tell you something. I give him a pretty good chance. I give him as good a chance as you would give any lightweight champion to defeat a welterweight champion. What they say is that a good big man beats a good little man. A great big man beats a great little man. So we're going to find out how great Mikey Garcia actually is coming up this Saturday night. And we're also going to find out how great Errol the Truth Spence is. And if he indeed is truly deserving of that moniker, the truth, quote unquote. So far, I've seen Errol in some pretty good matches. The best matchup that he's had thus far was against Kell Brook. That, to me, was the first fight where I was able to truly qualify his skill set his grit, his intangibles, so on and so forth. But for the most part, other than Kell Brook and Lamont Peterson, the name recognition has pretty much been lacking from his resume, and that's not all his fault. Many of these fighters have tried to avoid him. Only Mikey Garcia seems to have the courage to take him on and challenge him for his belt. I think that Mikey knows, deep within his heart, that he's in a no-lose situation. I mean, other than the possibility of getting his ass wazazazazupped, I mean, other than that, he knows he can get in the ring with Errol Spence. If he wins, he automatically becomes considered the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. If he loses, he was just a great fighter who dared to be great. He's going to be considered a great little man who dared to be great and stepped up to the plate against Errol Spence. We saw this same dynamic a couple of years ago when Kell Brook tried to pull a fast one on everybody. He jumped up a couple of weight classes to square off against Triple G, got his ass whooped, got his eye socket broke. And, you know, for the most part, he got a whole bunch of credit when in reality he was he was really trying to duck Errol Spence. And he ended up getting the other eye socket broke when he squared off against Errol Spence a couple of years ago. Now, in the aftermath of the I won't say controversial, but very close razor thin split decision victory for Sean Porter over Udanis Ugas. That sets the stage for whoever wins this fight coming up this Saturday night between Errol Spence and Mikey Garcia to have a ready-made opponent in their next fight. Because allegedly, Sean Porter says that he wants Errol Spence next. I'm not quite sure how true that is, but according to him, that's what he says. Based on the performance that I saw against Jordanis Ugas, I don't give Sean Porter much of a chance. I really don't. I think that he's still a very crude fighter. He fights hard. He's one of those fighters that you call a truth machine. Meaning he's going to bring the same level of intensity, conditioning, and wherewithal to every fight. But he's not particularly talented on an ethereal level. He's not someone that you're going to remember for his skill set. You're going to remember him for his grit and his heart and his conditioning. So there are going to be certain fighters that Sean Porter is not going to beat. If he gets in the ring with a fighter who is pretty much a 9 out of 10 at the very least in all the categories, he's going to lose because... Sean's just not that guy who's going to get into the ring and take away what you do best. He's not going to do that. And I don't quite trust his brain trust, his uh, father who's his trainer. I don't trust his father to come up with the appropriate game plan. I thought that the game plan that they had against Jordanis Ugas almost cost them the fight. Sean tried to box from the outside against a fighter who has a longer reach and a better jab than him. Fortunately for Sean, Ugas did not use the jab as much as he should have or was supposed to. Now, you know, I was going to do a preview video for their fight, but I didn't have enough material on you guys to be able to determine exactly what his chances would be against a fighter like a Sean Porter, who's been in there against Danny Garcia. He's been in there against Keith Thurman. He's been in there against Kell Brook. So it's very difficult to be able to determine or discern exactly what Ugas would have been able to do. But before the fight... I knew that Ugas was a Cuban boxer, so I knew that he was going to have a very good skill set. He was going to stick to the basics. The problem with him, from what I saw in the little bit of footage that I did view prior to the fight against Sean Porter, was that he squares up his shoulders too much. When you square up your shoulders like that, it takes away some inches from your reach. And that would have been inches that he could have used to avoid taking some of the punishment that he took from Porter. Now, once again, Porter is a truth machine type of fighter. He's going to bring out whatever you have inside of you. If you're a coward, if, you're, if you have courage, it's going to come out when you face a fighter like Sean Porter because he's going to push you to the limit. But I think that some of the flaws in Ugas' style stopped him from, from being able to, to truly validate his performance. When you're the opponent with very little name recognition 
and you're going against an American fighter who happens to be the champion, who has a great deal of, of name recognition, you better do something in the fight to make sure that you stand out. Your work rate has to be very high. Most Cuban fighters, their work rate is not high. But like I stated, normally their skill set is relatively high. They make very few mistakes. So Ugas, even though stylistically there were some things that I thought he could have he could have improved upon, he didn't make any major mistakes. And that's why he was able to go 12 rounds with, with Sean Porter. And I won't quite say that he won the fight. It could have went either way. I had no problem with, with Porter getting the decision. But I thought that Ugas' offense was more effective than Sean Porter's offense over the course of 12 rounds, meaning he landed the more telling blows. I think that Sean Porter landed more blows, but Sean Porter, his style is just ugly. He throws these wide looping right hands, and he's one of those guys, he's never going to get a lot of knockouts against top fighters because his technique, his punching technique is not good at all. But he's a tough dude, he's very strong, and he's always in great condition, and he has a lot of heart. Do I think that Sean Porter is going to defeat Errol Spence? Hell no. That's assuming that Errol Spence is going to win this fight coming up this Saturday night against Mikey Garcia. Right now, I will give Errol about a 75, 80% chance of victory over Mikey Garcia. But let me say this. Let me say this. I've never seen Mikey Garcia in a fight where his opponent did not feel his power. I've seen Mikey Garcia hit Adrian Broner. And Adrian Broner shelled up for the rest of the fight. Adrian Broner shelled up in a way when he was subjected to Mikey Garcia's power that he did not even shell up against Manny Pacquiao. Bronin was actually willing to exchange with Pacquiao at certain points in their fight. There were very few points in his fight against Mikey Garcia where he showed any willingness to exchange with him. But you know what? Let's hear from Mikey Garcia and Errol Spence. Of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. You'll see that Spence Garcia fight live on pay-per-view in Texas. And with one of the fighters, Heidi Andro. Thank you very much, Will Mikey. Just one week away from a legend-defining fight at AT&T Stadium. There's a lot of hype around this. It's exciting. How are you feeling just one week out? I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited. It's a terrific fight you know, for the sport of boxing. But, uh, you know, for my career, it's the base of my career. And I'm very excited that I'm going to accomplish this you know, fight. And let me say this quickly before we let Mikey Garcia continue. I give him a decent chance because... I like his overall skill set. I like his mental approach to each and every fight that he takes. I also like his power base. The question is, can he hurt Errol? Because he's going to have to step in and stand in there and hurt him. I've seen Errol take punches from Kel Brook. I've seen him take punches from Lamont Peterson. Now, Lamont is not known as a big puncher, but Kel Brook is. And Errol was able to weather that storm. So can he weather the storm of Mikey Garcia? Now, if you're Errol Spence... What you and your team are going to have to watch out for are the gloves that Garcia and his team try to use. Because we know that Team Garcia is known for getting a little funny with the gloves. We know that from the first Floyd Mayweather Marcos Maidana fight. So that's something that they're certainly going to have to watch out for. You know, it's a to make history, so I be happy with it. In terms of your weight right now, where are you walking with? Uh, where I'm walking with I'm comfortable. I had to gain a little bit of weight. Now, Mikey Garcia stated in response to the question that was asked to him, what fights has he watched to study Errol Spence? And he named, he named the two fights that I named because those are pretty much the, the two best fighters that Errol has fought thus far. <laughs> Every other fighter that he's fought has been a decent to low-level contender. 
based on the notion that he has a very difficult time making fights with top level fighters because it's just not worth it. If you're Keith Thurman right now, you need Errol Spence to build his name back up because that's a fighter who can beat you. But he has not done enough in the sport for you to make enough money to get your ass whooped. So that's that's the business problem with Errol Spence. He's almost too good without the notoriety. So now the reporter asked Mikey Garcia if he saw any flaws in Errol Spence. Mikey stated, it's not that I've seen flaws, it's that I know how good I am. In other words, Mikey's saying, I have seen flaws, but I'm not going to tell you what those flaws are. And I'm not going to put that out here on national TV because he might hear it and it might galvanize him even more. Let me say this. I could tell you about Errol Spence's flaws. He can get very lazy with his footwork and he has a tendency to neglect his head movement. And that's going to make a major difference in this fight. I promise you that when Robert Garcia is talking to Mikey Garcia after their film sessions or whatever they're doing to study Errol Spence, he's letting him know, look, this guy does not like to move his head. If we could sucker him in maybe to an uppercut or a straight right, hurt him, try to step in, see if you could finish him early or maybe somewhere in the second or third round. I think that a fight between Errol Spence and Mikey Garcia, the longer it goes, the more you lean towards Errol Spence because we know he's going to be in great shape. As I've stated, if you've seen many of his previous big fights or at least the two big fights that he's had, especially the one against Kell Brook, he actually gets stronger as the fight goes along. Errol Spence is a top-class athlete, not just a top-class boxer. So Mikey is going to have to try to, to end it early if he can. Hope he can catch Errol with something hard early and step in. Because Errol does neglect his head movement. And he can get lazy with his footwork. And it's, it's, it's not so much that I've seen holes, it's just that the media and the fans still haven't seen the best of me. I know what I'm capable of in the past few years, I'm going to find out next week I'm going to fight. How did you end? I went. Well, good for you, Mikey Garcia, for believing in yourself. But, you know, <laughs> like Mike Tyson said, and everybody loves to quote him, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And then I knock their nose more into their brain and call the cerebral hemorrhage. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to hear from Arrow the Truth Spence. Yes, thank you, Chris. Kate, Keith, and Ray here. Let's welcome in from Dallas via satellite, the IBF welterweight champion, Errol Spence Jr. Good to see you, Errol. We're now, what, one week away from the biggest fight of your career. One of the things you've spoken really highly of is about Mikey Garcia's fight IQ and his technical skills. Have you actually been able to find sparring partners that, that can mimic him? Yeah, I have. I found Kangaroo Jack. We got some good work in with him. And, uh, you know, basically all I need. Um, definitely. I've been able to find sparring partners, but um, I've always been in training camp. Me and my coach's game plan always been to work on our own fundamentals and working on our own skill base and and and, and basically working on my own um, game plan. So we've been finding great sparring partners, great guys that mimic him. But, um, you know, I'm ready for Saturday night. I'm 100% prepared and fully focused on Mikey Garcia. What that translates to is <laughs> there's nothing that I really need help with because I've seen every style. I've boxed the great Floyd Mayweather and went toe to toe with him and held my own. So I don't see Mikey Garcia bringing anything to the table that I haven't seen already. Errol, this is your first pay-per-view event. Have the obligations of selling the fight uh, taken away from some of your training time because you've got to be out to promoting it, doing all the interviews and such as this. Uh, no, it hasn't been too bad. Just like now, I'm on, I'm on air with y'all, and I just came from from sparring, and um, later on today I'm gonna go running. So we've been able to work between that, and um, you know, even when I went to LA, I was able to bring my coach, and I was able to work out there too. So I mean, it hasn't been a distraction at all. Um, you know, the obligation has been pretty easy. Been having Fox here for about you know a month, following me around and things like that. So. You know, they, they was working behind, behind my schedule, so that's been the great thing about it. What's up, EJ? Do you consider Mikey Garcia what the up? greatest challenge of your career today? I feel like on paper-wise, he's, he's the best challenge right now in my career today and the biggest challenge just 
the magnitude of the fight, me fighting on Fox pay-per-view, you know, and then fighting in, in my hometown at the AT&T. So I don't know if he's the hardest fight till the fight's over with. You can ask me that because it could be an easy night. So, I mean, on paper, he's the hardest fight right now. Good job helping him build this fight up, Errol Spence, because you know damn well that that man's coming up from 135. Now, let's keep in mind, Mikey Garcia does have a belt at 140, or has won a belt at 140, let me say. So, it's not like, it's not as huge a jump as the media's trying to make it out to be. But Errol knows that he's going to be, he's going to be discernibly the bigger man on Saturday. So, if he were to lose the fight, it would be a shock. I personally would not be super duper shocked because I understand the skill set that Mikey Garcia brings into the ring. What I'm going to be watching for early is how Arrow responds to Mikey Garcia punching him in the jaw. I want to see what his punch resistance is to Mikey Garcia's power. Now, Mikey does go up and down. He works the body. He also works the head. He has a good jab, but the problem with Mikey's jab is that his reach is going to be so much shorter than Arrow Spence's. I expect Arrow to step in, especially try to hit him with right hooks to the body early to try to wear him down and then break him down in the first three or four rounds and then probably get a stoppage somewhere around rounds six or seven. Does a win solidify you as the second best welterweight in the world right now? <laughs> I think wins. Does a win solidify you as the second best welterweight in the world right now? Keith Thurman, as usual, trying to cover his fear with jokes. This dude been trying to joke around with Errol Spence like they're good friends for the last four years now. <laughs> Keith is like the new kid in school who, who thinks that if he gives the bully his lunch money and his lunch, that that's going to stop the ass whooping. That ass whooping is coming for you, Keith. I'll tell you, bro, I don't give a damn how much you joke around, you know, how much slick you put in your hair. It's, that ass whooping is coming, man. I think the win solidifies me as the number one welterweight. I think I'm already the number one welterweight in the world. Just, you know, my activity and me fighting on Fox Tech Review. Let me say this. Errol Spence states that he believes that he's the number one welterweight in the world. You know who else believes that? All the other welterweight champions. They all believe that he's the number one welterweight in the world. You know how you know that? Because whenever it's time for them to fight him, they have some type of excuse. Now, cats talk about Terrence Crawford. Nothing against Terrence Crawford. I have love for the brother. But he talks all this shit about all these fighters at PBC. And then he goes and signs back with Bob Arum. So that tells me that he was never serious about fighting any of them dudes at PBC. Because if he was, he would have signed with Al Heyman, collected all the straps, and then went back to his daddy, Bob Arum, if that's what he really wanted to do. Instead, he wants to yell from the other side of the fence. And I'm not saying that Terrence Crawford can't beat any of the other welterweight champions, I'm not saying that he don't believe that he could beat them. What I'm saying is that he's full of shit. Because he knew damn well that the networks were going to be a major divide between these fights getting made. So if he was really serious about getting the fights made, he would have came over to the PBC. And, you know, me having to sell out the at and Center, which is a large, a large crowd. So, I mean, I feel like I'm the best welterweight in the world right now. I'm going to prove it March 16th, and then after that, I'm going to prove it again. So, you know, just with my activity and the, the guys I've been fighting, I am the best welterweight in the world right now. Now, Errol Spence said, just with my activity and the guys I've been facing, I'm the best. That was a shot at Keith. What he's saying is that, Keith, you've been gone for like two years, dude. You can't be the best. You haven't, you haven't been fighting anybody. All right, listen, uh, we are very grateful for you joining us. Thank you so much for being here with us. We'll see you again on tomorrow's edition of Inside PVC Boxing. See you then, Errol. Thank you. And look, nothing against Keith, but that performance against Riverside Rocky, <laughs> he and his team might want to consider getting in the ring with another B-class welterweight contender before he tries to step in the ring with a champion. But I don't think that Al's going to allow him to wait that much longer before he gets that ass whooping. Thank you. But anyway, that's basically it on that. Once again, my prediction for this fight between Errol Spence and Mikey Garcia coming up this Saturday night is Errol Spence by stoppage somewhere around round six or seven, maybe eight. I just don't see this fight going to distance because Errol Spence's approach to fighting is not to allow fighters to go to distance. He just doesn't do that. I'm not quite sure if I've ever seen any of his fights reach the distance, even against Kell Brook, who was a naturally bigger man. 
uh, he pushed for the stoppage and got it somewhere around rounds 10 or 11. I don't see Mikey going a distance with Errol Spence. And if Mikey were to win, it's not going to be because he outboxes Errol over 12 rounds. It's going to be because he gets an early stoppage because maybe he catches Errol somewhere around rounds one or two, maybe even the third round. But the longer the fight goes, the more it leans towards Errol. And Errol's like, you know what I mean, really, he's like an avalanche. He gets stronger as it goes along. So we'll see what happens. So peace.